is going to the polls just over a year after violent clashes between the army and anti-government protesters left 91 people dead and parts of Bangkok in flames. The election is expected to be a bitterly fought battle between Prime Minister Abhisit Wechichiwa's Democrat Party and Pua Thai, a rebadged opposition movement backed by former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat, who was kicked out in a military coup. I'm Wayne Hay, and on this edition of 101 East, we ask, will an election offer reconciliation or trigger further turmoil in Thailand? It's a country beset by a deep, ongoing divide. For the past five years, Thailand has lurched from crisis to crisis, caused by two warring factions. On one side, the elites, better known as the Yellow Shirts, whose occupation of state buildings in 2006 forced the army to stage a coup. Opposing them, the Red Shirts, a movement made up of urban poor and rural villages. Their two-month occupation of central Bangkok last year forced the unelected government to turn to the army once more. Running street battles and a decisive assault on the Red Shirt camp left 91 dead and 1,800 wounded. But with the country now heading towards national elections on July the 3rd, is it finally on the road to reconciliation? To find out, we travelled to Udon Thani, in Thailand's rural northeast, where the push for change still blares loud over the airwaves. <laughs> Sing Pet Jitai Song is one of many red shirt radio DJs broadcasting from stations around the country. His talkback program regularly slams the government. Thirteen such stations were recently shut down by authorities under government orders for operating illegally. This station has moved twice. They are afraid of us and have tried hard to shut down the station. People came to guard it because they chipped in money to build it. It belongs to the people. Because of this, I feel democracy is at a dead end. Red Shirt supporters back per Thai, the party predicted to win the most seats this election. Overseeing their campaign is the former Prime Minister deposed in the coup, Taksin Shinawat. His younger sister, Yingluck, spearheads the party with the slogan, Taksin Thinks, Per Thai Acts. He remains exiled in Dubai after escaping a two-year jail sentence for a conflict of interest conviction. Not that it matters to the true believers. Everyone said Taksin is corrupt. If Taksin is, and we have enough to eat and live, I say let him be corrupt. We only have two choices here. Those who cheat more, others who cheat less. Singpet's village was one of many to benefit from Taksin's economic initiatives like cheap health care and social services. In the mechanic workshop he built using a loan from the former PM subsidised village fund, he says he hopes Per Thai's policies will help his teenage daughter become an accountant and revitalise the town. If Per Thai wins, our lives improve. I guarantee over a million percent. Politicians come and go. Taxi may things happen, and everyone hopes he will come back. Today, Mr Jitai Song's red shirt faction is opening a community centre to educate locals about politics though it's really a front to promote Per Thai. Under Thailand's electoral rules, the red shirts and other political movements aren't allowed to campaign with any of the parties. So that means no posters, no placards, no logos at events like this. But in this northeastern region of Thailand, a stronghold for the red shirts, they'll do whatever they can to get their political messages across. 
per tie is number one on the election ballot, and red shirts are using one finger to tell people who to vote for as a Yingluck Shinawat poster is paraded around. A fine line is being navigated, all in the name of a political voice. Back in the south, Thailand's capital, Bangkok, is emerging as the main election battleground. Amid glamour and clamour, more than 30 parties are competing in this showdown. It doesn't phase Prime Minister Abhisit Wachachiba's Democrat Party, who took power after the coup. If this election is about election of the Prime Minister, we have a very, very good chance. We need to be able to, we, we were hoping that uh, before it's all over, uh, people would get a chance to hear by themselves, you know, listen to what Abhisit has to say. The Democrat Party has rejected big rallies for small events and social media to spread their message. They want voters to look at the road ahead, not the past. But their handling of last year's violence and the subsequent investigation has drawn criticism. We all, we, we all Thais have to take the responsibilities, you know. I have to take responsibilities because I couldn't uh, conclude the negotiations. The yellow shirts are a headache for the Democrat Party. They're fractured, no longer support Abbasit Wichichiva and want voters to sabotage their ballot. In contrast, the red shirts remain out in force. One year after the crackdown, they gathered where their protest camp stood to commemorate the violence. Dr. Wen Tajirikhan is one of a number of red shirt leaders running for Per Thai. He says the movement supports the party but doesn't control it. You have to understand what we call uh, walk by two legs. Every human being must walk by two legs. If you have one leg, you can't walk. The relationship amongst or between the red shirt and Per Thai party, we call it the two legs. Healing wounds from years past remains high on Per Thai's election agenda. They're proposing to grant amnesties on political grounds to figures involved in the 2006 coup, including Taksin Shinawat, as a way of forging ahead with national reconciliation. Dr Wen Tajirikhan concedes more needs to be established before any such measure can be considered. In order to bring back uh, the uh, reconciliation or the peaceful climate in Thailand. We must bring back the law of law first and bring back the justice first, not, not talking about the amnesty first. To outsiders, Thai politics is a black and white affair. But an Asia Foundation report released last year found only 12% of Thais feel a strong affinity with the red and yellow shirts. The vast majority, 76%, feel no association with either movement at all. With much of the electorate still undecided, both parties are trying to show they can restructure Southeast Asia's second largest economy with promises of mega projects and investment reform. The lower middle class account for 60% of the Thai population, and analysts say they will determine the election. What are their needs? Two things. First is they need a social security safety net system. Secondly, they need easy and cheap credit in order to expand their businesses or initial set up of capital. Ubon Kwa Wong has driven Thailand's taxi, the Tuk Tuk, for 20 years and has seen politicians come and go. He's willing to give either side a chance but says certain issues are crucial for grassroots voters. We want everything free free education and free medical treatment. We have to pay, but we are the people are the ones who need help most in the country. We need to have more economic opportunities. 
Both parties are seducing voters like Ubon with similar economic policy, higher minimum wages, free education, zero interest housing loans and subsidies. He thinks such promises are hard to keep. I think it could make people like us getting more in debt. I don't think in reality they can do it. Giving loans without interest is impossible. This is just a policy to gain popularity and votes. Dr. Apichat Satit Niramai from Tamasat University says with polling showing a result too close to call, a post-election gridlock could have a bad impact on the economy. This minority party are the crucial factor who are going to decide the next government, who will, who will forming the next government. To see one of these parties in action, we travelled east to a town called Buriram, famous for its big Khmer temple, a big soccer stadium, and a big minority party, Bum Jai Thai. Rungsikorn Timoturuka and eight other party MPs hold all the seats in this town. They hope to win 70 nationwide this election. We are ready to work as a coalition party. At this very moment, we still can't say we will work with any particular party. We need to wait until the election results come out. Bum Jai Thai helped the Democrat Party stitch together a government with other smaller parties and say a similar coalition needs to be formed quickly for stability's sake. We need to form a government fast. If the country is left in a vacuum without real government, there will be no decisions, and then there are chances of people coming out on the street after the election. If that happens, many fear the army could intervene. In a country where there have been 18 military takeovers since the 1930s, the last leading to Thaksin's fall, the army has a long history of meddling in Thai politics. Right on the border with Cambodia, Thailand's army are making a lot of noise, engaging in conflict with their nearest neighbour over an ancient temple. A few hours past Suorin, the army are taking local media up to their lookouts. The temple in question, Priya Vahir, is obscured from view in rainy mist. Some believe shrouded in this dispute are more political reasons. Recent border fighting flared up just before the campaign began, leading some to question whether the army are trying to say they're still a force. In my opinion, this conflict, this border conflict, is, has a hidden a sort of a hidden agenda in order to stir up things. And I couldn't guess exactly what is waiting is more like a, a bomb waiting to be boom. Whether it's showing houses they've rebuilt or the social seeds sown in communities, it's at least an opportunity for the Thai military to show a friendlier face after last year's crackdown. The army never used people's safety for political purposes. We're protecting our sovereignty, flexing our muscles doesn't enter our minds. And when it comes to another coup, or intervening if Per Thai wins, Thailand's army spokesperson is just as unequivocal. The election will be resolved with ballots, not bullets. The army is not a yellow shirt army. We don't hate red shirts, they're Thai citizens, and whoever forms the next government, we can work with them and our role is the same. Despite the divided landscape, Thailand's diversified economy draws significant international trade and growing tourist numbers, the envy of its neighbours. But political upheavals could compromise this, unless all citizens feel included under one flag.
To discuss Thailand's election in more detail, I'm joined now by representatives of the two main parties. First of all, from Pur Thai, Dr. Pitya Pukaman, a former diplomat, himself a candidate in the upcoming election and a senior member of the party. From the Democrat Party, Dr. Burunard Simutarak, a man educated at Harvard University in the United States and a specialist in public health. Dr. Burunard, let me start with you being the representative of the Democrat Party. Your Prime Minister, uh, the Democrat leader, Abhisit Wachichiwa, has said that he wants voters in this election to focus on the future rather than dwell on the events of the past. Isn't that a little bit dangerous given what happened around Thailand last year, given the fact that 91 people were killed, gunned down, and there have been no investigations completed, no answers have been given? Well, I think the world has seen that Thailand has been through some turbulent times. We have seen the wretched um, protests turn violent. We have seen Bangkok burn down. Um, I think this has very much harmed um, Thailand's international reputation and image. Um, the government has set an independent commission looking into um, these cases. Um, in Which has come up with nothing yet? Um, no, actually the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has already released a preliminary report and um, has um, revealed that many of these instances um, were the works of um, militias, which were very closely linked with some of the um, hardliners um, uh, being ordered from, from abroad. But I think um, these cases um, very much need to go before the due process of law, and that uh, anybody responsible for the loss of lives on either side you must be held accountable for. Well, Dr. Pitti uh, of Pur Thai, I guess a similar question to you. How can you expect people to vote for your party in this election, given what happened last year. They were your supporters. Well, you have to understand that the, uh, the red shirts uh, are not Pur Thai, although we share the same philosophy, but uh, we, the way we do things are quite different. The Pur Thai party we respect. Uh, we do things under the uh, parliamentary process, whereas the red shirts, they are the spontaneous uh, people, the people who like democracy. These people, they want they are people who suffer economically and they want the government to do something for them. It's all very well now that we're coming up to an election to try to put a divide between the red shirts and poor Thai, but you're backed by the same man, Thaksin Shinawat, and he is the person that the red shirts were trying to bring back and he is the person that poor Thai is trying to bring back. So really, you are one and the same. Mr. Thaksin, I understand. I, he, he, does, he does nothing wrong. I mean, well, he, he was found guilty of corruption and an abuse of power. That's fairly wrong. He is the victim of political persecution. All the cases against him are politically motivated. I think people understand that. People around the world understand that. And that's the reason why they don't extradite him back to Thailand. Your, well, a large part of your campaign for this vote is based around that name, Thaksin Shinawat. His sister is your candidate to become uh, the Prime Minister, even your slogan is Thaksin thinks poor Thai does. Isn't it time that Thailand moved on from Thaksin Shinawat? Is it wrong that for the, country, for the person who has admitted the country and who has made the country progress so much, uh, done something so much for the poor, uh, cannot contribute his ideas, cannot express his ideas, cannot advise the poor Thai party? Uh, we are running on the track record. Dr. Burunat, uh, at least poor Thai is proposing something aimed at reconciliation. They're talking about an amnesty, which of course not everyone will like for political offenders since the coup in uh, 2006. Whereas one of the main things I've heard from the Prime Minister, Abhisit Wechichiwa, is that he uh, is basically threatening the Thai people that if you vote for poor Thai, there will be mass street protests. That's hardly a way to move towards reconciliation, is it? I think what Prime Minister Abhisit um, is pointing to is that um, what the Pur Thai is saying about reconciliation um, is basically a facade. Well, the facts remain that the most extreme leaders of the Red Shirt are now in the Pur Thai party party list right now. So um, you could see a situation where Kun Yinglak is not only beholden to her own brother, but also beholden to the leaders in the party list. And that is, um, you know, by no means a true reconciliation because, you know, any um, bill or attempts to exonerate or absolve Kun Taksin personally of his wrongdoings will only lead to further unrest in the country. Yes, but isn't that negative politics? Why not focus on positive things rather than threatening the Thai people and saying, vote for us or else? 
Are you therefore predicting that if Pua Thai wins this, there will be more street protests and therefore another military intervention, another coup? Is that what the Prime Minister is saying? Well, actually, um, the only people are saying that there will be another coup are the uh, wretched leaders who have been saying that um, both domestically and internationally. I um, un unequivocally deny that there is any possibility of the military taking over because now Thailand has also learned this important lesson that a coup is definitely not a means out of any political crisis, but it plunges the country further into crisis, and it is something that at least both parties agree is not um, the optimal choice for this country in the future. Dr. Pitya, haven't you made a huge mistake in Pua Thai by going so hard on Thaksin Shinawat, campaigning so hard on his name, trying to bring him back, trying to have an amnesty for all political offenders? Therefore, I suggest to you that you have no chance of winning this election because the army tried so hard to get rid of Thaksin Shinawat, you want to bring him back. Surely they're not going to allow that. The army is still a very powerful force in Thai politics. The popularity of Thaksin is still prevalent, is still pervasive in, 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 in Thailand, in our country. And uh, talking about the uh, amnesty law, things have to go according to the law, to the rule of law with no exception, whether it's Thaksin, whether it's the military, whether the people who triple the trigger, uh, people who stage a coup d'etat uh, and tore down the, uh, the, tore the constitution, they have to be brought to justice, uh, with no exception, uh, including Thaksin. But Thaksin was brought to justice. He was found guilty of corruption and an abuse of power. After the, uh, the coup d'etat of 2006, the, the uh, justice system has been distorted, the uh, legislative system has been distorted, the administrative system has been distorted, the press, I mean the Thai press has been distorted, there is no justice, there is double uh, standard, uh, uh, there is violence, there's no freedom, there is the violent, uh, violation of the human rights. Human rights uh, was a major issue for Thaksin Shinawan. But at no time in history has human rights been violated as much as this, uh, as this present government, you see. Uh, so this, uh, this has to be corrected, you see. It's not the amnesty law that has to, has to be enacted, but uh, the, uh, the restructuring of the administrative, the judicial system, the economic system has to be, has to be undertaken. Well, Dr. Burunard, let's talk about other issues in the election because there are other issues other than what has gone on uh, over the last few years. Uh, no one can deny the economy is doing pretty well in Thailand, but you have announced a raft of campaign promises, uh, cheap loans, uh, things like that. How on earth are you going to pay for these policies if you get back into power? When we came to government, uh, well, although it's true that Thailand has been um, hurt by the global financial crisis, but I think we were um, able to enact policies which have shored up um, confidence and try to avert uh, domestic impacts by um, trying to institute a stimulus program as uh, most countries in the world also affected have done similarly and have done um, the needed social investments to ensure that families are protected. In fact, what we have done is by no means populist policies. You know, we have instituted a free education program um, up to secondary level. We have um, enacted a pensions program to um, have the old people have a cushion in times of crisis and we have um, revamped uh, farmers income guarantee program so um, these programs are very much um, targeted at um, trying to make sure that the domestic economy is going by um, ensuring that spending power exists and that is one of the main reasons why Thailand was able to bounce back from a negative 2.8 before we came to government into one of the strongest um, growing economies in Asia at 7.8% uh, growth last year. So I, I think um, that's, um, that's um, what we are bringing into the election. Okay, and Dr. Pitya, finally, just briefly from you as well, you've announced a raft of populist policies too, just like you've accused the Democrats of doing things like free iPads for students. It's hardly a way towards reconciliation. How are you going to get politics back into parliament? If we were to win and become government, uh, we would be, we will have I'm sure that a genuine reconciliation is possible, uh, given the mandate of the people, given the, uh, the desire of the people uh, for unity, uh, to get rid of the uh, social and political division, to get rid of the polarization. Uh, if the people have political will and they express it uh, by the ballots, uh, I think we, uh, it is possible that we can put it into effect.
All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate your views ahead of what will be a very interesting election in Thailand. That is all we have time for now on this edition of 101 East. You can follow the program on our website, podcast, and Facebook. From the rest of the team here in Bangkok, thanks for watching.